Welcome to part two of our discussion on cell organelles. Today we're going to start talking about the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the rough endoplasmic reticulum. ER, or endoplasmic reticulum, is basically just sheets and sheets of cell membranes and the main job of both of these types of ER is that it's a transport system. The rough ER helps to transport proteins and the smooth ER helps to transport hormones and fats. Let's talk about the rough ER first. The rough ER is very distinct because it has ribosomes attached to it, little dots all over it, and it's also usually attached to the nuclear membrane. They're physically connected. Ribosomes make the proteins, as we discussed in the earlier screencast, and then places them inside the rough ER. The rough ER then will then modify some of those proteins and will send them off to the Golgi body within a vesicle. Here we see a close-up of a ribosome that's attached to a rough ER. And you'll see that this ribosome is making a protein. And as the protein gets longer and longer, eventually it will be inserted inside the rough ER. And when the ribosome has completed the protein, it will release it. The rough ER will package it up in a vesicle and will send it to the Golgi body. Here's a picture of the rough ER, an electron micrograph picture. And you can, you can recognize it very easily because it has dots all over it. You can see the ribosomes all over it. The smooth ER has no ribosomes, and that's because it doesn't have anything to do with proteins. Instead, it makes fats, which we also call lipids, and it also makes steroids. Now steroids are things like hormones, estrogen, testosterone. A steroid is also a type of fat. One of the big jobs of the smooth ER, however, is to detoxify any kind of harmful waste. And that's why we find a lot of smooth ER inside liver cells. You also find a lot of smooth ER in any kind of gland because glands make hormones. Ovaries make estrogen, testes make testosterone, the pancreas makes insulin. Here's a picture of the smooth ER. It looks very different. There aren't any dots. And next we'll talk about the Golgi body. We also call the Golgi body the Golgi apparatus. Sometimes we refer to the Golgi as flattened sacs or flattened pancakes. And basically what they are is just pieces of the plasma membrane that have been flattened up. You also find vesicles very close to the Golgi body. So here's vesicles on one side and you'll also find them on the other side. The reason for that is because vesicles bring things to the Golgi body and the Golgi send things away from it self as vesicles, usually sending them out to the plasma membrane. So what does the Golgi do? What is its job? It receives proteins and hormones from the smooth ER and the rough ER and then it modifies them, changes them, makes them functional and it stores them until they're ready to be released. Here you see a great picture of the Golgi body. This is an animation. Vesicles on either side being pinched off. Here's an electron micrograph picture of a Golgi. And when the vesicle does reach the plasma membrane, all of the contents from the inside of the vesicle are sent outside the vesicle and that's called exocytosis. So I guess it makes sense next to talk about vesicles. Vesicles are basically just storage sacs. They're very small. They're formed when things come into the membrane and that's called endocytosis. And they're also formed when things are made at the rough ER, the smooth ER, and the Golgi body. So they're used to transport substances around the cell. Things that have to be kept separate from the cytoplasm. Food, water, waste. They're basically storage sacs. Here is a picture of a vesicle. You can see it's basically just a piece of the cell membrane with a double layer of phospholipids that can store things on the inside. 
A vacuole is just a much larger version of a vesicle, usually formed when we bring bigger things inside the cell. A lysosome is also a specialized vesicle, and the reason it's so special is because it stores digestive enzymes, which we call hydrolytic enzymes inside it. The Golgi body makes the lysosomes. You have to keep these enzymes inside a, a sac because they could basically digest the cell from the inside out. So we call these lysosomes also suicide sacs. They can literally digest an entire part of a body. For example, they will digest the tail of a tadpole as it's being turned into a frog. Lysosomes digest the contents of any kind of vesicle that it joins up with. So many times when the cell gets food inside of it, the lysosome will attach to that food vacuole and digest the contents of it. Lysosomes also destroy old or malfunctioning cell parts and white blood cells have many lysosomes inside them because they can kill the bacteria that the white blood cells eat. Here's an example of what a lysosome would look like with an electron micrograph picture. You'll notice it looks just like a vesicle but it's got much darker insides and those dark insides are showing the hydrolytic enzymes that are inside the lysosome. The cytoskeleton is what we'll talk about next. Now what the cytoskeleton does is, is it gives the cell its shape, its form. So if an animal cell is supposed to be a rectangular shape, as you would see in the trachea, then the cytoskeleton will help give it that shape. If the cell is supposed to be more of a round shape, as in the egg cell, then it will hold that shape. The cytoskeleton also anchors and supports and keeps in place all of the different organelles that we've been talking about so far. If you look at an x-ray of a cell, if you can call it an x-ray, it would look very much like a monorail system because what a cytoskeleton does is it transports, it helps to move all the organelles around the cell. I'm going to show you this in a video in class. There are two types or two parts to the cytoskeleton, the microtubules and the microfilaments. The microtubules are bigger than microfilaments. They're shaped like cylinders and they're made of proteins called tubulin and they're like tubes. And it's microtubules that make cilia, the tiny, tiny little hairs inside our lungs and other places in your body. They also make flagella as we see on sperm and they make centrioles which help to move the chromosomes around during mitosis. In humans, we only find flagella in sperm cells and you'll see on this cell the cilia which we find in the lungs and in the female reproductive system we also find cilia in the ear and these are both hair-like projections which help to create movement or locomotion the way that they move is they take those pairs of tubules tubulin proteins and they slide them against each other you'll notice that if you look at a cross-section you'll see there are a bunch of pairs of tubulin, nine of them, all surrounding a center portion. Here's a picture of some cilia inside the trachea. They help move all the goop, dirty mucus outside of the lungs to back to the back of your throat. Here's a sperm cell with the flagella that helps it swim to the egg. Here's a cross-section of the cilia. Here you see the pair of tubulin So microtubules also make centrioles. When you recognize them, you'll recognize them as being kind of star-shaped organelles. And they have tubulin in groups of threes. That's how you recognize that cross-section picture. And what happens is during cell replication, the centriole will actually attach through its spindle fibers to chromosomes to pull them apart during replication. We only find centrioles in animal cells, not in plants. Here's an electron micrograph picture of a centriole. Let's watch the process of mitosis. So here's the centrioles making spindle fibers. The spindle fibers rip the chromosomes apart. So now we've got two identical daughter cells.
Here's a picture of the actual process of mitosis inside a cell. You can see the dark chromosomes being pulled apart by those spindle fibers. The centrioles are on either end. And here we see two daughter cells at the end of the process. The second type of the cytoskeleton we call microfilament. Now microfilaments are smaller, they're very long and thin, and they're made of two proteins called actin and myosin. And what they do is they help to move the organelles around the cytoplasm. When you think about those vesicles that are moving from the ER to the Golgi body to the plasma membrane, it's the microfilament that helps to move that. So microtubules are tube-like, they make cilia, centrioles, and flagella, and the actin filaments help to support the cytoskeleton and move organelles around. Lastly, cytoplasm is just a watery, jelly-like fluid that's inside the cell. All the organelles are suspended inside the cytoplasm, and there's many different things inside the cytoplasm, salts, proteins, enzymes, water, all the chemicals that the cell needs to make reactions happen. Without cytoplasm, we wouldn't have enough water for all of the reactions to happen. All reactions require water. And of course, the cytoplasm also helps to hold the shape of the cell. Here you see the jelly-like cytoplasm inside a plant cell. Hope you've learned a lot about organelles. Be prepared with all your hot questions when you come to class next day.